Hey everyone, my name is Jeremy Devins and welcome to our first day of our Healthy Hips and Hamstrings program. Uh, it's going to be 30 days. We're going to go each uh, Monday through Friday. You can also do this other days if you like, but five days a week and over four weeks. And then so each Monday we're going to be focusing on a certain part of the body, each Tuesday a different part of the body. So it'll all kind of work together so you can see progress in your practice and see where your weaknesses are, see where your strengths are, and find more balance between the two. We'll go in a lot of detail throughout the course about uh, the function of the hips, the flexibility, the strength, and the hamstrings. So we'll get into all that as we go, but I wanna really focus on experiencing and embodying the practice. So let's start on our backs. Come down to rest, palms open. It's like a mini Shavasana to start. So connect to your breath. Feet relaxed. Maybe one of the things we'll talk about a bit is internal and external rotation. So turn your toes towards the center, internally rotating the thighs, the femur and the hip socket. And then externally rotate by turning your toes out. Really relaxed. We're not really doing anything here, just sort of feeling that ability to rotate in, turn the toes in and then rotate out, turn the toes out. Same thing with the arms, bring the arms overhead, turn the palms up towards the ceiling, internal rotation of the arms, and then turn the palms down towards the ground, then turn the palms up towards the ceiling, and then turn the palms down towards the ground, external rotation. Bring the knees in towards the body, rock a little side to side, massage the back. Today, on our first day of each week, on the Mondays, or whatever day you're doing it, we'll be focusing on the inner thighs, the abductors, the adductors, A-D, right? Abductors are on the outer hips, abduct, you think of abduction out, abduction adding into the center inner thighs. And then we'll come to the happy baby, Ananda Balasana, hold outside the feet, rock side to side, massaging low back. Okay, we're starting simple and gentle, and we'll progress into more advanced, challenging postures throughout the program. Bring your right heel in towards the tail, and extend your left leg out to the left, coaxing the hamstrings open, left heel in, right leg out. Easy, gentle motions, other side, right heel in, left leg out. Left heel in, right leg out. A little bit of core activation, hug the knees in and extend your palms towards the ceiling, squeeze the knees towards the center, lift the shoulders, chin in towards the chest. If you know Bakasana, it's like recline Bakasana. Engaging the thighs towards the center, so you're starting to strengthen, contract the adductors. And then we'll let that go back to happy baby. And bring the soles of the feet together, all the way down to the mat. Sukta Baddha Konasana, recline bound angle. Knees are apart, and if they're up high, you might scoot your feet a little bit further forward, so you got a little more move, a little more range to open up. Palms open beside you, or one hand on the belly, one hand on the heart. One of the things we'll practice a lot is contracting and then stretching. So strengthening and then stretching. So we just contracted the inner thighs, now we're letting them lengthen a bit. Finding that balance of strength, stability, flexibility, openness. In the yoga sutras, it's called stira and sukha. Effort and ease. Hug the knees into the body, rock side to side. And from here, rock forward and back on the length of the spine. Coming up to a hands and knees position. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. And start to move your body any way that feels good. Might be big circles in the hips. Forward, back, side to side, diagonal. Anything that feels good. Just sort of getting attention into the body. It's very challenging to, to 
be focused on thinking and sensation at the same time. So notice what sensations you can find in your body here. And then come to a neutral spine as you inhale, cow pose, drop the belly, lift the tail and chin. As you exhale, round the back, cat pose, press into the hands. Inhale, cow pose, thighs slightly internally rotate. And then exhale, cat pose, thighs slightly externally rotate. Continue with your breath, inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. And then we'll come to a neutral spine. Tuck your toes, lift your hips back to down dog, and pedal your feet out, shifting weight left to right. Easing into the hamstrings. All right, today we're focusing on the adductors and the side body. Throughout all of the practice, we'll do a little bit of everything, but there's going to be a main emphasis on each day. Today's the inner thighs and the sides of the body. From here, come to down dog. Bend your right knee a lot. Turn your back heel down like if you're going to go to warrior one. Drop your right shoulder. Open your left shoulder. So the emphasis here is on lengthening the outer left side of the body. Deep bend into the right knee. Drop the right shoulder. So your right side needs to contract a little bit for the left side to lengthen. Again, there's, an attention, there's a balance of opposites happening through the body. The, the right side shorter and the left side can lengthen and vice versa. If the thighs contract, then the hamstrings can lengthen more, right? So contract your left thigh. Maybe your left heel drops a little more. Back to center, down dog. Other side, bend the left knee, turn the back heel down at a 45 degree angle. Press into the arms and the hands. Drop your left shoulder. Open your right shoulder towards the ceiling. It's going to be not a huge movement, but enough to feel that length through the right side. Again, contract your right thigh so you can lengthen more through the back of the hamstring. Steady deep breaths. If your mind becomes distracted, Find a sensation in the body you can focus on. Be curious about the temperature, the texture, the ease or the effort. Back to center, down dog. Lift your right leg straight back, point the right toes. Then step the right foot forward into a lunge, left knee down, hands to the right thigh, lengthen the spine. Shoulders down the back, right hand to right hip, Left arm extends out to the side. Big side bend through the left side of the body. Again, right side shortening. The right knee is over the ankle. If you can drop the hips forward and the knee comes past the toes, take a wider stride, or a longer stride rather. Come back up to center, arms overhead. Shoulders relax. Lower the hands inside of the right foot. Step your right foot out to the side for lizard pose. Right knee over ankle. And from here, tuck your, or tuck your back toes, lift your left knee, engage your left thigh. Find length in the spine. As if you're doing plank pose. Strong arms, steady breaths. If you want more challenge here, you can drop to your forearms. More is not always better. So if that feels like too much today, come back to your hands. You can also decrease the intensity by dropping your back knee. Any of these variations is fine. So the emphasis here is on strength, lengthening the front of the left hip and strengthening the inner right thigh. Here, we'll step back to down dog. And then step the left foot forward. Low lunge first, right knee down, hands to the left thigh. 
So here with your hand, you can kind of push the thigh, the tissue forward. And you might need to scoot your foot forward, lengthen the spine, shoulders down the back, left hand to left hip, right arm, long arc to the left. The left side contracting so the right side can lengthen. The word hatha, hatha, hatha yoga means ha and ta, so sun and moon. This balance is masculine and feminine, yin and yang, contraction and expansion. And everything in the postures, right? And then it really uh, filters out into everything in our lives, finding balance of effort and ease, light and heavy, masculine, feminine. It starts in our bodies first and our awareness of those, those balance of opposites. Come back to center, arms extend overhead, shoulders relax. Lower the hands inside of the left foot into our lizard pose. Right knee comes back. And again, any variation here that you like. So there's a little bit of a hugging in towards the center with the right with the left thigh. And a lengthening through the right thigh and the right psoas. All right, we'll focus more on the psoas in another class, in another day of our program. And again, you can lift the back knee. You can lower to the forearms. And a good measure here is how is your breathing? Does it become choppy? Or can it stay smooth and steady as the intensity increases? If at any point it does become unsteady, decrease the intensity. We want to stay within our range so that our range can expand. If we just push to our limit all the time, we'll get overwhelmed and, and burned out. Right, giving about 40 seconds here total and it takes about that long for the, the brain to really pick up the signal. Okay, let's strengthen here, let's lengthen here, let's add some tissue here. And then we'll come back to down dog, pedal the feet out. Right, the the strengthening, strengthening and the lengthening is really neurological, so our brain is responding to how we're using our bodies. If we sit a lot, then our brain responds by shortening the hip flexors, tightening the hips, atrophying the hips, because we're just not using them. So we want to use them for the full range of motion, pedaling the feet, and then Look forward, step the right foot forward, left knee down, arms up alongside the ears, hands to the waist, right hand stays there, left arm extends out, and then back to center, lower the hands, step forward, forward fold, knees bent a lot, let the arms be heavy, head hangs down. Step the right knee back, right knee down, arms up, hands to hips, right arm extends. Right, so we have access to it, maybe going back to that edge that you were at before. Back to center, lower the hands, back to down dog. Step the right foot forward, and then step the left foot forward, and bring both feet outside of the hands. Turn so you can see me here. Malasana, hips lower, hands together at the heart, lengthen the spine. Focus your gaze at a single point in front of you. Relax your toes so the toes can lift and just gently rest there. As you're here, it's a lot of downward energy. so. Bring energy towards your center by squeezing your thighs towards the center. And at the same time, resist with your arms. So your arms give something for your legs to strengthen against. Push into the thighs, push into the arms. 
equal tension from both sides. If at any point you need to come up, please do, and then come right back. Right. The way we build strength in the tissue is time under tension. So the longer we're contracting, engaging that tissue, it tells the brain, let's add some more tissue there to strengthen it. And then the lift the hips, forward fold, feet, hips width. Knees a little more straight now, pedaling the feet out. And then again, we'll come back to our malasana, feet apart, toes point out, knees point out, hands to the heart. And then we'll strengthen here by pressing into the feet, lifting up into a horse stance so the knees, feet come wider apart. Knees still point in the direction of the toes. This is essential. And then hands come to the thighs, inner thighs. And from here, we'll keep the left forearm on the left thigh. Or sorry, I'll mirror you. Right forearm on the right thigh. Left arm extends out, pointing through the fingertips. You can look up at the hand if that strains your neck to slip down. Hold and breathe. Right, so there's still a little bit of this hugging towards the center, this contracting in, but uh, the legs stay fixed. So they don't move, but they, they want to contract the right inner thigh, the left inner thigh, right inner thigh. Other side, left forearm to thigh, right arm extends. If you need to come up, please do. Time under tension builds strength. And it really doesn't need to be a ton of effort and a ton of time. 30 minutes a day is plenty to see results. And we'll come back to center. Lower the left knee down. Right leg out to the side, toes pointing, sorry, left leg out to the side. So your right knee's down, I'm mirroring you. And then your toes are pointing forward, your left hand resting on the, the ankle or shin. And then reach your right arm out, parigasana gauge pose. You can look down here or up, either way it's fine. Intention lengthening left inner thigh, contracting left side, lengthening right side. Back to center with the hands and the knees. Right leg out to the right, all 10 toes pointing forward. Hands to the hips, lengthening your spine. And then bring your right arm down the leg. No weight, no effort. Left arm extends. Parigasana gate pose. The final shape of the posture is the range of motion. It's just for looks <laughs> in some ways, right? It doesn't really matter how perfect it looks. Your, your, your gate pose might look more like this, right? It might be a lot smaller, smaller range of motion, but you're still working within your 80%, 60 to 80% of your range, and that's where you grow. Pushing to 100% all the time, it's where you burn out. Main emphasis, rooting through the right foot, lengthening through the left side, allowing that contraction on the right side. I did forget to say, if there's any tension under your knees, we want to alleviate that. Put a blanket under there, a yoga blanket, or anything soft to support the knee. I happen to be on carpet, which isn't the best surface for yoga, but it is great for the knees. So hardwood can be a little tenser, a little tighter, and more uh, pressure on the knee. So make sure the knee feels comfortable. We'll come back to center. Hands under shoulders, knees back in. Right, so come back to our hands and knees position where we first started moving and move forward, back, side to side, any way that feels good.
And then from here, we'll step the right foot forward, like our low lunge, and then turn so you're in a wide stance. Turn to uh, a wide-legged forward fold, all ten toes pointing forward, spine lengthening, hands under the shoulders. And if you don't quite reach there, you can use your blocks. So blocks under the hands so that you can get your upper body parallel to the ground first. Toes lift and relax. Feet root down through the ball and heel of each foot. Outer edge roots down. And there's a slight, very subtle internal rotation of the thighs. Rather than externally rotating, right? We're internally rotating and engaging the left thighs, contracting so that we can fold forward. Again, range of motion, not the most important thing. The breath is. It tells you if you're going too far or if you've got more range of motion available. Steady, even breath. Right? It can be challenging to maintain that contraction in the thighs and fold in. From here, we'll walk the hands over to your left foot. Again, I'm mirroring you, so walk your right arm out to lengthen. Bend into your left knee. Right, Just like gate pose, this starts to lengthen the right side, the right inner thigh, the adductor. Maybe you've got a little more range to walk that right hand forward more. And you keep your hips as best they can in that same first position. So you've got something to stretch from the left hip, the right hip to the right hand. All right, you can let that left knee bend a lot. Then we'll come back to center, other side. Let your right knee bend, the left arm walks out. Root through the outer edge of your left foot and then drop through the hips into the right knee. This is what creates the length in the adductor. Keep walking your left fingertips out. Right, so ideally at the end of this practice, you'll feel really spacious and stable, right? So too much stretching and then we feel kind of loose and ungrounded. Too much strengthening, we start to feel angry at the yoga teacher, <laughs> maybe unconsciously, just a little upset and irritable. So we want a balance of the two, strength and ease. Come back to center, hands under the shoulders, lengthen the spine. You can use your block again. And then turn towards the front of your mat to a plank position. From here, right for or right hand comes a little bit forward. Turn to your right side of your right foot or lower your right knee down for side plank. Either way is fine if you got the ability to keep a steady breath in Fashistasana, do so. And another side, strengthening the obliques, the left side of the body. Left hand's a little bit forward, left side of the foot's down, or left knee is down. And then come back to center, plank pose. Lower all the way down to your belly. And then here, hands heart forward and up, hands under the shoulders, shoulders down the back. And then two forearms down, sphinx pose. Tops of feet root down, engage the thighs, engage the glutes so you can track the legs. And then shoulders contract on the back. All of this is just going to support us in the next thing. So it's feeling that engagement. And then turn your right forearm to be parallel to the front edge of your mat. Come onto your side, your right side. And then here we'll start to lift the oblique. So left hand on left hip. Start to lift the body into side forearm plank. Lower down as you exhale. I'm sorry, inhale. And then exhale, come up. 
Inhale, lower. Exhale, come up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, come up. We'll add the arm. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift and extend your top arm. Come back down. Inhale. Exhale, up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, up. Inhale, down. Exhale, up and hold time under tension, strengthening those outer uh, side body, the obliques, the outer abdominal muscles. If you need to come down, please do. Otherwise, hold. And we'll come all the way down. And we'll go to the other side. Left forearms down. Side body ready to lift. So right hand on right hip. And then lift, inhale. Sorry, exhale as you come up. And inhale as you come down. Exhale, come up. Inhale, down. Exhale, up. Inhale, down. Exhale, up. Inhale, down. We'll add the top arm. Exhale, up. Arm overhead. Inhale, down. Exhale, up. Inhale, down. Breath and body in sync. Exhale, up. Inhale, down. Exhale, up. And hold. And so you're not coming forward with the upper body. You're right over that shoulder. You're rooting down through the forearm. Rooting down to the outer edge of your foot. As best you can, hold and breathe. Time under tension, build strength. And then we'll lower down, come all the way down to your back. Hug the knees in, big exhale through the mouth. Happy baby. Can, you can exhale through the mouth as much as you like. If you feel kind of overloaded, overheated, at any point, that's a good measure to slow down and take breaths through the mouth if you need to. Exhale through the mouth if you need to. Generally, you always want to inhale through the nose, though. Right heel in, left leg extends. Left heel in, right leg extends, other side. Again, left leg extends, right heel in. And then left heel in, right leg extends. And then happy baby. And then knees press into the arms, palms face up. Supta Bhakasana. Lift the shoulders. All the energy to your center. Squeeze. All right. Next week we'll be going deeper into Bhakasana. And then from there, the following weeks, deeper into arm balances. But we need the strength and inner thighs first. And then we'll release down, arms extend overhead, legs reach down, inhale, and exhale through the mouth, let everything relax. Inhale, engage everything, lift the feet of the arms, exhale, one more time, inhale and reach, and exhale, arms down beside the body, the feet externally rotate naturally, palms externally rotate, arms externally rotate, and then shoulders down the back, making a little adjustment so you can feel rested in Shavasana. Our practices in this program are just 30 minutes, so if you have more time for Shavasana, please do take it. Rest is just as important as the effort here in the practice. 
So I encourage you to drink more water, get more sleep throughout the next few weeks. Just be mindful of your energy. You might need less sleep or more sleep, more water, less water. Likely you're going to want more rest, more water. For now, letting go of any effort in the body, seeing if there's still any effort in the legs, the feet. the upper body, soften the shoulders and face. If you have longer, I suggest you set a timer for five minutes. Otherwise, if you just got 30 minutes today, hug your knees in and slowly rock to your side. Back up to sitting. Hands together at the heart. Bowing the mind to the heart and to each other, symbolizing this balance of opposites within us. Namaste.